Motor actuators are commonly used in the fluid power industry where hydraulic power is being converted to a rotary output drive device. These actuators are used as a direct drive or in combination with a gear reducer. Such applications often include vehicle wheels, conveyors, winches, and spreader drives. Fluid displacement actuators are typically classified as gyrotor, gyroller, radial piston, or external gear. While piston type motors can be used as fixed displacement actuators, axial and bent axis motors can also be used as variable displacement actuators. The gyrotor and gyroller motors are a fixed displacement actuator, which are low speed, high torque, bi directional motors. They are considered durable, compact in size, and inexpensive. These motors are used in many mobile applications where size, costs, and weight are factors. The external gear motor is designed much the same as an external gear pump. These motors are used in many high-speed, low-torque applications, are fixed displacement, and can be bi-directional. These motors are used in many mobile applications where size, costs, and weight are factors. Radial piston motors are the most robust of all motors and are fixed displacement. They are very low speed, high torque motors. Compared to their physical size, they are very efficient, however costs may be a consideration. These motors are used in many high load wheel, conveyor, and low direct mount applications. The axial piston motors can be fixed displacement or can give greater flexibility in machine design and capacity when used as variable displacement motors. There are two general designs, axial piston and bent axis piston motors. They are high speed, low torque motors, are robust and very efficient. They are used in many mobile applications where design flexibility is needed. Hydraulic motors are rated according to displacement and torque. The first consideration should be torque. Hydraulic motors are rated in foot or inch pounds of torque per given PSI, typically in pounds per 100 PSI. Torque is equal to load times radius. Large displacement motors usually have a greater radius for the hydraulic fluid to push against. Therefore, they create more torque at a specific pressure. A hydraulic motor that is rated at 1 inch pound force per 1 psi is rotating a winch with a radius of 4 inches. Our load is 500 pounds. The required torque is 2,000 inch pounds. Based on the torque grading of our motor, our operating pressure would be 2,000 psi. The second consideration would be displacement. This is necessary to determine the amount of flow required to rotate the hydraulic motor at the required RPM. A gyrotor motor has an orbital internal gear system. The main components of the gyrotor motor include the stator that is an internal gear the rotor, which is an external gear, the drive coupling, an output shaft, a rotary valve that is often incorporated into the output shaft, and the housing with the ports. The rotor sits offset in the cavity of the stator. An open cavity between the rotor and the stator is created by the offset of the rotor, which has one less tooth than the stator. One tooth of the rotor is always opposed to one tooth of the stator. The cavity is divided into two pressure zones by the opposing teeth. One side of these opposing teeth is high pressure and the other side is low pressure. The rotary valve ports fluid from the inlet to the high pressure cavity between the gears. Fluid from the low pressure cavity is ported back through the rotary valve to the outlet. Fluid enters the high pressure cavity and as pressure builds, the rotor tooth is forced off of the stator tooth. This causes the rotor and the rotary valve to rotate slightly. The output shaft, which is connected to the rotor by the drive coupler, also rotates slightly. Fluid on the opposite side of the cavity is forced through the rotary valve to the outlet port. As the rotor moves, the next rotor tooth and stator tooth oppose each other. The rotary valve allows fluid to enter the high pressure cavity in its new position and the cycle begins again. These cycles cause the rotor to orbit around the inside of the stator. 
For each orbit the rotor makes, the rotor rotates one tooth in relation to the stator. Since this stator has seven teeth, it takes seven orbits of the rotor to complete one rotation of the output shaft. This creates a seven to one speed reduction and a similar multiplication of the torque output. Torque output from the motor is a result of pressure against the side of the rotor in the cavity between the rotor and the stator. The diameter and width of the rotor dictate the area available for the pressure to work against to create torque. roller motor is of an orbital internal gear design. The main components of the roller motor include the stator that is an internal gear with roller teeth, the rotor which is an external gear, the drive coupling, an output shaft, a rotary valve that is often incorporated into the output shaft, and the housing with the ports. The rotor sits offset in the cavity of the stator. An open cavity between the rotor and the stator is created by the offset of the rotor, which has one less tooth than the stator. One tooth of the rotor is always opposed to one roller tooth of the stator. The cavity is divided into two pressure zones by the opposing teeth. One side of the opposing teeth is high pressure and the other side is low pressure. The rotary valve ports fluid from the inlet to the high pressure cavity between the gears. Fluid from the low pressure cavity is ported back through the rotary valve to the outlet. Fluid enters the high pressure cavity and pressure builds. The rotor tooth is forced off the roller tooth. This causes the rotor and the rotary valve to rotate slightly. The output shaft, which is connected to the rotor by the drive coupler, also rotates slightly. Fluid on the opposite side of the cavity is forced through the rotary valve to the outlet port. As the rotor moves, the next rotor tooth and roller tooth oppose each other. The rotary valve allows fluid to enter the high pressure cavity in its new position and the cycle begins again. These cycles cause the rotor to orbit around the inside of the stator. For each orbit the rotor makes, the rotor rotates one tooth in relation to the stator. Since this stator has seven roller teeth, it takes seven orbits of the rotor to complete one rotation of the output shaft. This creates a seven to one speed reduction and a similar multiplication of the torque output. Torque output from the motor is a result of pressure against part of the diameter of the rotor in the cavity between the rotor and the stator. The diameter and width of the rotor dictate the area available for the pressure to work against to create torque.
This is a fixed displacement bent axis piston motor. The major components of this motor are the housing, port plate, control plate, output shaft, barrel, pistons, centering pin, and the drive flange. The ball of the pistons and the centering pin are held in sockets on the end of the output shaft by the drive flange. The pistons and barrel sit in the housing at about a 40 degree angle to the output shaft axis. A preload spring in the centering pin holds the barrel against the control plate. As pressurized fluid enters the inlet, it is fed through a kidney shaped opening in the control plate to the three or four pistons situated over the opening. Pressure against the end of these pistons creates force which acts at an angle to the output shaft. These pistons are pushed back in the barrel towards the output shaft. The result is an output torque which causes the output shaft, the pistons, and the barrel to rotate. The pistons over the outlet area are being forced into the barrel towards the control plate. Return oil from these pistons is forced through the other kidney shaped opening and out the outlet port. When the flow to the motor is reversed, the inlet becomes the outlet and the outlet becomes the inlet. The motor now rotates in the opposite direction. Any internal leakage passes into the area between the rotating group and the housing. This leakage is directed from the case drain port directly back to the reservoir. Output speed of the fixed displacement bent axis motor is proportional to the input flow. Drive torque is proportional to the difference in pressure between the motor inlet and the outlet. This is a fixed displacement axial piston motor. The major components of this motor are the housing, port plate, valve plate, swash plate, cylinder barrel, pistons, piston shoes, shoe plate, shoe plate bias spring, and the output shaft. The cylinder barrel is fixed to the output shaft. The pistons reciprocate in and out of the cylinder barrel on an axis parallel to the output shaft. A bias spring and the shoe plate hold the piston shoes against the swash plate and the barrel against the valve plate. The swash plate sits at an angle to the pistons. As pressurized fluid enters the inlet, it is fed through a kidney shaped opening in the valve plate to the three or four pistons situated over the opening. Pressure against the end of these pistons creates force which acts at an angle to the swash plate. These pistons are pushed outward in the barrel towards the swash plate. As this happens, the piston shoes slide across the surface of the swash plate. The result is an output torque, which causes the output shaft, the pistons, and the barrel to rotate. The pistons over the outlet area are being forced into the barrel towards the valve plate. Return oil from the three pistons is forced through the other kidney-shaped opening of the valve plate and out the outlet port. When the flow to the motor is reversed, the inlet becomes the outlet and the outlet becomes the inlet. The motor now rotates in the opposite direction. Output speed of the fixed displacement axial motor is proportional to the input flow. Drive torque is proportional to the difference in pressure between the motor inlet and the outlet. Any internal leakage passes into the area between the rotating group and the housing. This leakage is directed from the case drain port directly back to the reservoir. Radial hydraulic motors are classified as low-speed, high-torque rotary actuators. Their major components are the pistons, the camshaft drum or stator, the output shaft, and the rotary valve. Fluid enters the motor through the rotary valve which ports it to the pistons. The force created by the area of the pistons under fluid pressure 
acting against the offset of the eccentric crankshaft drum or stator creates a rotation of the output shaft as the piston telescopes and extends in its full bore. As the shaft rotates, it rotates the rotary valve, porting fluid into successive pistons and maintaining a continuous and smooth rotation. Returning fluid exhausted from the collapsing pistons is ported through the rotary valve and back to the reservoir. Three pistons are pressurized at once. This prevents any dead spots caused by a single dead center. This also assures a smooth rotating output. This type of radial motor is typically bi-directional. With a bi-directional motor, it is important to ensure that the fluid conductors are accurately connected to their respective ports on the motor to ensure correct rotation. Output speed of the fixed displacement radio piston motor is proportional to the input flow. Drive torque is proportional to the difference in pressure between the motor inlet and the outlet. Any internal leakage passes into the area between the rotating group and the housing. This leakage is directed from the case drain port directly back to the reservoir.